Coming up on today's show, people are confused about the Xbox Series X. We've got highlights from Ubisoft Forward and we're chatting with the legendary Jennifer Hale. What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of What's Good Games Live, right here at twitch.tv slash what's good games, where it's your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Monday. I'm Andrea Renee, joined by Miss Brittany Brombacher. Hello. How's it going, Britt? Fantastic. Wonderful. Wonderful. And we have a very special guest, Jennifer Hale here. Hey, you guys. It's great to be here. This is so exciting. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! -hoo. We're so glad that you could join us today when we had the opportunity to come across our inbox that you were out doing some promotion for this cool project that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. I was like, squee, this is very exciting. <laughs> um, and I was saving this to show you because it's one of my favorite pieces that I have. And I wanted to show you that I have this. Oh, oh what, what? Oh, I love that. Yeah, so I, a friend of mine gifted this to me, and we were talking um, before the interview started that the last time I saw you in person was during this press tour you did for Mass Effect 3, and he knew that, you know, obviously all of us here at What's Good Games are big Mass Effect fans, but he was like, hey, I got, I got this lithograph signed from, from Jennifer, and I was like, ooh, that's so exciting. <laughs> so I just want to say having that's a personal so cool. fangirl moment. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for that. sure. That's so cool. Thank so, you. So Jennifer, fun story. I met you once, oh gosh, probably around the same time as Mass Effect 3, and I'll never forget because I embarrassed the hell out of myself. I walk up to you, and I was like new to the industry, so vanilla, and I was like, I'm really jealous of all the romance scenes you got to do with Caden. And then you looked at me, you're like, oh! And then we took a picture, and I have the picture. I'll have to send it to you on Twitter later. Totally. <laughs> send it to me, because those are the most mortifying scenes to do. I'm always like, oh, no, not this part, not this part. Oh, yeah, and I congratulated you. I was like, I'm jealous. <laughs> That's funny. I'll tell Raphael. Oh boy. Uh, no, I already embarrassed myself in front of him too. Yeah. <laughs> So. Uh, for people who are just joining us and who do not know about the incredible body of work that Jennifer has worked on, um, she is the Guinness Book of World Records holder for the most prolific female voice actor. She's worked on major video game franchises like Mass Effect, which we were talking about, Metal Gear Solid, Bioshock Infinite, Overwatch, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, just to name a small handful. Uh, she's most recently featured in Marvel's Avengers and Iron Man on PSVR. Plus, we're going to be talking about her new audiobook that she narrates coming up in just a little bit. So uh, before we get into questions for Jennifer, which is going to be the bulk of our show today, uh, we do have a couple of news items, but Brittany and I wanted to just run down um, a couple of announcements that are happening this week. We have some cool streams happening. Obviously, we're doing the show early today, as you guys know, because our PAX Online panel is happening at 1145, and that is our What's Good Games at Home panel that we are doing with our good friend Joey Noel from Kinda Funny, and of course, Rihanna Manuel and Christine Steimer are going to be present as well. You guys can watch that at twitch.tv slash PAX2 immediately following the show today. And then, Brittany, we have a couple other streams happening this week, too. We do. So Thursday, September 17th at 3 p.m. is the wonderful world of games journalism. This is an RTX panel that Andrea and I are going to be on. And we have some fun co-hosts. Blessing from Kind of Funny, Brandon Jones from Easy Allies, and Daniel and Inside Gaming's Autumn Fair will be moderating. So that'll be fun. It's going to be an interesting conversation for sure. And this Wednesday at 12.45 p.m., we are doing our PS5 Showcase Live Reacts. That's going to be a big stream. That's going to be a good time. Yeah, so we're thinking that's when we're finally going to get price details and a release date for the upcoming PlayStation 5 console. So lots happening. And then on Thursday, ahead of the RTX panel, I'm once again hosting a Twitch gaming for the weekly, which should be a jam-packed show. You can join me at 11 a.m. Pacific time at twitch.tv slash Twitch Gaming. So lots, lots happening, everybody. Uh, it's going to be great. And we do want you to know we do are still taking questions for Jennifer. So if you guys want to drop your questions in, you, of course, are welcome to put them in the chat. But sometimes the chat moves fast and we don't get to see them. So, of course, you can go to whatsgoodgames.com slash dearwgg and enter them there. And we will see them for sure. Sure. All right. 
enough with the announcements. Um, why don't we jump into the news? Brittany, there's just more leaks happening. I think this Xbox reveal has been the leakiest console reveal <laughs> I can remember in recent history. <laughs> that just sounds kind of gross and kind of silly, but that's fine. It's okay. true. So this comes from IGN, and I have to admit, I had to read about five different stories regarding this subject before I actually understood what the hell it's talking about. So Xbox Series S will not run Xbox One enhanced versions of backwards compatible games. Microsoft has confirmed that the Xbox Series S will not run Xbox One X enhanced versions of backwards compatible games and will instead run the Xbox One S versions of Xbox One and Xbox 360 titles with other beneficial features. As reported by VGC, while the Xbox Series S won't run the Xbox One X enhanced versions of Xbox One and Xbox 360 games, it will still be a step above the Xbox One S with, quote, improved texture filtering, higher and more consistent frame rates, faster load times, and auto HDR. Xbox Series S was designed to be the most affordable next generation console, quote, and play next generational games at 1440p and 60 FPS, a Microsoft spokesperson said. To deliver the highest quality backwards compatible experience consistent with the developer's original intent, the Xbox Series S runs the Xbox One S version of backward compatible games while applying improved texture filtering, higher and more consistent frame rates, faster loading times, and auto HDR. It may be running backwards compatible games in Xbox One S mode, but because the GPU is so much more capable and knowing what we know about how backwards compatibility works, you should actually be able to clean up performance issues, Digital Foundry's John Linneman said. So games that may maybe struggle on Xbox One S, either the dynamic resolution was overly aggressive with slowdown and things like that, conceivably they should actually run noticeably smoother on this machine. Furthermore, the Xbox Series S also boasts direct X-ray tracing, 4K streaming media playback, variable rate, rate shading and refresh rate and much more. What? So I cannot that, believe you made it through that story as easily as you I'm did. So that is impressive. impressed. <laughs> I tell you, so Cyber and I covered uh, all the reveal info on last week's show. And that, trust me, like, I think I got all of my flubs out then because it was a lot. And also, it was funny because my Siri on my iPhone kept going off because she kept thinking. I was saying, hey, Siri. And I was saying, like, Xbox Series. It was pretty good. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, okay. they did this to themselves, right? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, I feel like I just burned a thousand calories just reading that whole story. <laughs> it's so much brain work. Imagine if they just called it Xbox three. <laughs> I mean, I would have taken that like no problem. So yeah, it took me a long, it took me like a hot minute to figure out what this all actually means. But I think, I think I have my head wrapped around it. Are you ladies following as well? Yeah. So it sounds okay. like the series S is going to be not backwards compatible with the way the Xbox One X is, right? Correct. Yeah, so the Xbox, Xbox Series S, when you're playing your backwards compatible games, won't have the enhanced whatevers of the Xbox One X backwards compatibility. But it will have, like, the ray tracing and XYZ. Anyway, I'm kind of surprised. I, maybe Chad can let us know, but I feel like this isn't that surprising. You know, it's like you have the Xbox Series S for the Xbox One S, Xbox One X for Xbox Series X. I can't. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, do you ever get, uh, Jennifer, when these stories about the new tech come out, is it something that's exciting oh, to you yeah. as somebody who works in the industry? Or are you like, over my head, I can't deal? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, just yeah. smile and nod, right? But he's going to watch you play. This is the best. <laughs> yeah, I also don't really care too much about the nitty gritty specifics, but there is a portion of the gaming audience that very oh, yeah. much cares a lot about and it. Man, yeah. it, like without them, that's how we all move forward, right? Like we need their, their know-how because they are part of those people who make all that stuff happen. Yeah. That's and very I, like, true. I eat paste. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like how 4K is becoming more common now. I remember at the beginning of this last generation, it was one of those things that still kind of felt like a luxury. And now it seems like almost every game supports 4K. And obviously that both the new consoles are going to support 4K. And I think that I love seeing gaming characters in 4K, but I never want to see myself. In yes. 4K? Oh no. Amen to that. <laughs> oh no. 
<laughs> I'm like mocap, yes. Like animation, awesome. Mm -hmm. Real skin, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that much reality. <laughs> yeah. Are there any upcoming game launches that you're looking forward to kind of checking out? I know you don't play a lot, but just kind of checking out the work of some of your, you know, fellow colleagues in, in the acting business. Oh yeah. There's like, there's a big star Wars announced today. I believe, um, the empire, what is it? The empire. Hold on. I have it right here. Um, do you guys know, no, uh, no sure. Mm -mm. I don't think so. Oh my God. Amazing. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. I've just got it right here. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, of course. Here it is. Yeah. Star Wars squadrons. You know, they've got that stuff. I just like stuff that my friends are in and that's coming out. I'm like, that's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Like, Girl, what's that? I got to go to work now. Yeah. <laughs> that's really the stuff. Just... I don't Do know. Ever... They just announced... oh, Sorry, Sorry, go ahead, Britt. I was say, didn't they just announce that it has all that joystick compatibility and whatnot? And that was, yeah, okay. That looks fun. I'm worried I would get sick though. Real talk. <laughs> oh my God. I've done that. I've been on... <laughs> streams and like sitting behind and there's a giant tv and we were we're going through the rooms and stuff and like i'm starting to get the cold sweats and i thought it was something i ate and i was like no, oh, no. I'm totally motion sick from this thing so i just spent the rest of the stream staring at the bottom of the tv and just like mm -hmm. yeah this is great <laughs> i was like oh my i was in a cold sweat it oh that's bad. the first sign of no bueno oh sweat. so no bueno <laughs> so no bueno yep yeah. But Britt, do you look at some of this and go, this is important? Or do you think that it's just another talking point and re a reason for gamers either to get mad or to get excited? I look at this and go, this keeps bringing back the backwards compatibility issue or question we always ask or talk about of like, does it really matter that much? How many people are using backwards compatibility knowing that there's so many new games coming out every single week? Yeah, you know, for me personally, it doesn't matter because real talk i don't know how often i'm going to even use the backwards compatibility feature i'm just probably going to play the games that i can play on my xbox series x and since that's a console i plan on buying it doesn't really affect me i think um i think the issue people are having is that you know xbox has always been proudly touting that they're going to have the backwards compatibility and it's going to be great and it's going to be awesome look how consumer friendly we are and just the fact that like this little tidbit of information wasn't necessarily slipped in there i think people probably try to feel like they probably feel like Xbox is trying to get one over on them. That's my best guess. Because to me, this isn't that big of a deal. I don't think it's that surprising. Um, if this is really going to be the make or break it for you, whether or not you want to get an S or an X, well, I guess there you go. If that's the big, if that like backwards compatibility is the reason why you want to upgrade. And obviously the price point, there's something to be factored in there for that. But yeah, I, I think it's just trying to cause a hubbub personally. Yeah, I think gamers are just itching for any kind of piece of news that they can glob onto with these new consoles. And um, that press briefing that leaked for the Xbox Series S, I mean, gave some additional details, but in that video, if you guys missed it, the same person who, who leaked the original announcement leaked this, what looked like an embargo behind closed doors press briefing with Phil Spencer and other members of the marketing hardware marketing team at Xbox and basically just talking about like where this fits into their overall portfolio and what it is and it, for, for me it just feels like all standard stuff so but of course we'll keep you guys up to date on any new info that we get um, we are just going to kind of speed right along because we want to get to your guys' questions for Jennifer so last week because of the timing of Ubisoft Forward um the Steinbachers weren't able to get it into the podcast, unfortunately. Uh, but you guys had plenty of to talk about with Xbox. Oh. But we do want to just kind of briefly run down some of the announcements, some of the bigger announcements. And I think when Brittany and I were looking at this list of games, I think without a doubt the game that seemed like most people or had most people talking was the Prince of Persia remake. So this is something that I know a lot of people were wanting to see happen but I I don't know I was never a big Prince of Persia fan same never was this doesn't twist my panties you know just, <laughs> it just, it does. <laughs> that's how we measure things around here Jennifer is how twisted do your panties get <laughs> oh, that's great 
Uh, yeah, I mean, this looks fine. So the write-up on IGN says Ubisoft announced a remake of Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. A full ground-up remake of the 2003 3D platformer Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time remake is it's Ubisoft's first full remake and is coming out in January 21st, 2021. And I believe it's Ubisoft Mumbai that's working on this, which is really neat. And I think they have the original uh, voice actor who came back as well. So, I mean, I, I think this is doing some good fan service, but it just doesn't really do anything for me personally. But I'm excited for all of you that are excited. You know? We need you know what? Lo love love what you love, right? Exactly. Um, the other kind of announcements that we got in Ubisoft Forward, we got some updates on some of Ubisoft's ongoing games like Rainbow Six Siege and For Honor, Just Dance. Uh, we did hear about the new Far Cry VR game that is coming, which was really interesting. Uh, we got some more details from Ghost Recon Breakpoint, The Crew 2. And we got that Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game complete edition, which is just another return to a classic. So really, it just it felt like kind of just some updates on some ongoing games and then a couple of classic games they kind of pulled out, put a nice polish on and are like, enjoy it again. Enjoy it again. And yay obviously, for honor, that's a yay for honor. Sorry. Yay! <laughs> yes. Uh, we actually haven't talked about For Honor recently um, because the last time I think they were, there was a controversy that we talked about with one of their animations. But um, Jennifer, I would love to hear from you about somebody who works on some of these live service games. Like how often do you have to go back and record new content? I would imagine it's different for every project, but... Um, yeah. Right. They tend to batch it. They tend to do like, you know, every few months you'll go in like Guild Wars is one of those like we it's a pretty regular check in. Um, it's been a while because of COVID, but that was every, you know, four months or so going and new content, going and new content, um, something like For Honor, it's a bit more spread out. And, you know, Star Wars Old Republic, that's another pretty regular check in because there's always new content going on there. That's so cool. I always forget that that game is still super robust. And I think it's because there's been so many Star Wars games from different types of gaming genres that are all kind of competing for, for attention that the, you know, the good old standby is just plugging away, you know, <laughs> doing its thing. <laughs> still there. People still yep. playing. Everyone's still <laughs> active. <Yep. laughs> All right, Brittany, anything else from Ubisoft forward that, you know, was blowing your skirt up? Uh, no, no, no twisted panties, no blown up skirt. The one thing I just want to say is Immortals Phoenix Rising, in case you missed uh, my hands-on impressions, because I did get about two and a half hours with that game. You can listen to last week's show. You can hear all about it. All about it. Excellent. The game looks cool. I was, yeah. again, didn't care that they changed the name. I was like, that's fine. Yeah. Change the name if you want. You do you. Um, all right, so now our next story <laughs> is oh an update on the ongoing Apple saga. So I feel like we've talked about this on the What's Good Games Live quite a bit over like the last month. Over the last month. Yeah, no, I mean, eventually we'll stop talking about Apple. But um, so for people who have maybe missed it, Epic Games is in a big old legal fight with Apple about their monetization policies on their platform. And we have an update from The Verge that says that leading the changes of a new App Store guideline that's been carved out for xCloud Stadia and other apps is an explicit ruling on game streaming services like Google Stadia and, of course, Microsoft's Project xCloud, which is supposed to launch this week. Uh, so Apple tells CNBC that they are newly allowed, but the new rules show that each and every game must be downloadable directly from the App Store and that every game update must be submitted to Apple individually before a game could stream it to its users. So that means that Microsoft or Google can't build a single overarching xCloud or Stadia app that contains access to all of the games. But they can offer individual games on the App Store as separate pieces of software using their streaming tech, which sounds like a whole bunch of extra work for Microsoft and Google. Um, but hey, Apple, I guess, decided to make them put their money where their mouth is and say, hey, we'll give you an opportunity to put your service on our platform. We're just going to make you work for it. <laughs> and then and I love this the statement. lawyers employed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? The lawyers never seem to run out of work. That is the truth. <laughs> Funny, huh? Isn't that funny how that works. <laughs> I love this statement from Apple. This remains a bad experience for customers. Gamers want to jump directly into a game from their curated catalog within one app, like they do with movies or songs, and not be forced to download over a hundred apps to play individual games from the cloud. All right, <sighs> Jennifer, have you been following this? 
Nope. <laughs> good for that's you. for the best good for you yeah. i don't have enough room up here my files are full man I'm good for stuff. you <laughs> i'm making stuff yeah. no i think it's i think it's really fascinating though because i was telling Brittany that before we went live today that i had i really was interested in talking to you about your money podcast yeah i think that some of your viewpoints on the power of money and how you know, it can be used to really enrich and better people's lives. And I think that it's such at the crux of what's happening here and why we've had some real philosophical issues with what's happening is that all of these companies are arguing about money amongst themselves, but they all are so financially successful that they could probably cut each other some slack and still be trillionaires or billionaires. <laughs> they could cut us some slack. I mean, the current model that we have is not sustainable. When you have people walking around and the people like Jeff Bezos just crossed, I think the $200 billion mark which to me is criminal because he doesn't pay his employees a living wage. And the upshot of that is that you and I pay those employees benefits because those people don't get like, you know, all the things that they should get. And so they fall into the public sector for the support that they need. And that comes out of our pockets. So basically we're subs, we're giving Jeff Bezos our money to keep him a billionaire besides buying the stuff that goes through Amazon. Like I'm, I'm not, the system is broken when people are walking around and they can't afford to buy the things that these giant corporations make really that ends in what I believe Nick Hanauer, who I love, you know, called, you know, pitchforks, the pitchforks are coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. COVID, COVID is a great Look, we all know, I mean, I've talked about this a bit lately. We all know the suffering and the difficulty of COVID, but COVID's an incredible opportunity as well. And I'm taking it. And I invite everyone else to join me, which is before we were socializing at the mall, we were going out, we were spending more. Our priorities were, what if I got, am I, have I hit that mark yet? And right now we have a chance to reset and to go, wait, 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 wait. I'm not going to the mall, I'm gonna go outside I'm going to hang with people I care about and feel comfortable with. I'm going to do creative things I never really gave myself the chance to do before, or I'm just going to sit tight because I never got the time to do that. Or I'm just trying to cope with my life and I'm drowning and I need help and maybe people will come help me. Like there's all these different ways to look at it, but we get to pause and reinvent, you know, we get to think about what we want and what we're doing. And our number one priority right now is, is everyone okay? And I think that's where it belongs. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I just feel like we should all like oh. light a candle. I know. Just like all put our hands up, light a candle and just let the good well, woman people, speak her good word. Well, people don't realize like we all have power. It's time to take it back. My power in my decision making. You, it's a branded. This has been the last few generations. A couple of generations have been branded generations. We used to just have cereal. We used to just have stadiums. We used to just have events. Now there's, you know, Marvel cereal, Disney cereal, there's Staples Center, the Verizon Amphitheater, there's the, you know, Comcast this. It's because they've all bought in and they've branded everything. Like, when was the last original thought we all had? Like, do I need these 50 outfits? Sometimes some people genuinely love and enjoy them. And others are like, oh, I got to do this thing. You know, I've I got caught visiting some family and basically it was kind of a wild whirlwind of where I ended up for right now. And I've been living out of the same suitcase for about six months, you know, a couple of boxes on top of that. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I need all that other stuff. And, you know, it's working out okay. So, yeah. That's some like life truth right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to get rid of all of my outfits though. <laughs> But that's because it's your genuine happy place. And that's the thing. Don't be dogmatic about it. Like maybe lots of outfits are your jam. You know, I mean, look at God, look at like Yaya Han. I mean, my God, give that woman a truck and let her tour the country being fabulous, you know, like give her a semi, you know, to get changed <laughs> in the Yaya show. Um, but like for me, I'm like, I don't know. I got these five things. I've been in the same overalls for two weeks because I'm demo on this house. <laughs> That's a whole other end of the spectrum. No, thank you. <laughs> That's a fair point. Um, I do want to call out uh, Doc Brook in our Twitch chat says, I didn't know it was possible for me to love Jennifer Hale more until this moment. 
Thank so, you. Yes. Thank you, Doc. Thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, Doc Brooke is great. She's one of our awesome community members. She also does a lot of moderation for our communities online. Um, and she's now doing streams a couple times a week to raise money. And she teaches. She's all around like a really, really great human being. Shout out to you, Doc Brooke. Fantastic. Um, I think this is a perfect time now to transition over to taking everybody's questions and talking to Jennifer about her new project. So the reason why we're here today and have the pleasure of having Jennifer on the show is because she's voicing a new audiobook called To Sleep in a Sea of Stars from Christopher Paolini. You guys may know him from the Aragon series. He's a best-selling author. And Jennifer, this is one of the first times? Is this the first time you've ever done an audiobook? It is the first audiobook Ooh. I've ever done. A funny thing about Christopher, I think, I believe he's a Guinness record holder himself for the youngest best selling author, I want to say. Um, but yeah, we, Christopher and I met in Australia at, uh, at a convention like a few years ago, and he mentioned something about this project, and I thought it sounded really cool. He didn't give me any details, he just said he had something that he might want me to narrate at some point, and I was like, cool. Um, and creative things like that don't always come to pass because, you know, life does what it does, right? But he, um, he actually got a hold of me a few months ago via Twitter and uh, asked if I would be interested. And I said, you know, I've never done one of these before. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I've listened to several because I love books. But um, he said, I know. And so we, we, we managed to find time and make it all work. And I jumped in and I was super grateful for the guidance of our producer, Callum Plews, who was amazing. And then Sal Barone, our engineer. And then I call him Invisible Patrick. He was our, our uh, editor. I, I'd like talk to him as I was recording going, Patrick, don't take that one. Take the one before. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'd never done an audio book. I knew that it was a lot of work, but I had no idea because the first one I've ever done, almost 900 pages, <laughs> oh. about 50 characters. And uh, I, I know in audiobooks, I know enough, I, I kind of think you're supposed to not do a full character for every character, but a suggestion, but a couple of these characters just took over. And there was no half doing that character. It was like, you know, like, I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, I'll just get out of your way. And then there was a couple of really interesting bits where I had to call Christopher and chat to him because there's a couple of aliens that communicate in a way that beings that we know of don't in any way and I'm like how do I make that into audio <laughs> so we worked out a whole thing around that and um it was really god it was a fun experience and the book is fantastic I ended up in a way reading it twice because I would read it and I would read if we were going to do like 60 pages ahead uh, 60 pages that day I'd read like 80 pages just in case we got ahead and that way I didn't get too far ahead but I didn't give anything away you know, I knew what was going on, but not enough to give anything away in, in any way, shape or form. And so, yeah, it was intense, but it was awesome. The book was so great. If you like sci-fi and big universes and cool groups of people and like crazy, incredible, beautiful science and adventure and intensity, and you'll love it. It's so, so fun. I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm sold that, that you're, yeah. you were speaking all the yeah. right words to me there. <laughs> so yeah. I have to ask, how is narrated an audiobook different from some of your biggest voiceover projects in gaming? Oh, man, it's um, it's even more intense. There's not a lot of loud stuff. It's just a constant go. Like I have so much respect for people who do audiobooks full time after doing this because we would do like four and a half, five hour sessions of just, you know, to read a book read the story and I'd have to grab my phone you know and I'd be like okay where's my voice memo for this character where's because I'd make voice memos to keep them all exactly in the in the middle of where they needed to be each character because they'd disappear for chunks of time and then they'd come back 100 pages later and I'd be like oh my god all right let me get the original for that <laughs> and um so it's intense I mean animation is I kind of have this scale where it's like well you're like film and tv you're doing meh, you know few pages a day like well film you're doing a couple pages a day tv you're gonna do like 10 you know pages a day and then you know animation you're doing 32 in a in four hours and but you're sharing it with casts right like and then in games you're doing like this huge volume and most of the time you don't see the script ahead of time it's cold reading and you get a couple takes and then it goes to market and you're completely by yourself but you're interacting with people it was different in the audiobook because I was telling a story, you know, and I was like, it, 
you know, I read to my kid, I read to my kid and, and it's sort of like that, you know, it's just sharing a story with somebody. So I didn't need to, you know, there was sort of that imaginary person you're reading to. And I will say with the characters, I had to jump fully into each character to make it ring true. You know, it, it's intense. It's intense. Wow. <laughs> fascinating i can't imagine keeping that many characters separate like oh my god it was a thing and i I was just like oh please help me please tell me this is somewhat separate (laughs) when you get into 50 you're like look the voice is what it is it stretched (laughs) pretty far but that's as far as we go you know (laughs) yeah yeah Absolutely. Well, for everybody asking in the chat one more time, the name of the book is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. The audiobook narrated by Jennifer Hale is available starting tomorrow, September 15th. So add it to your must listen or must read list. But there's so many things that the gaming community knows you for. We obviously have talked already a little bit about the work you did in For Honor and Star Wars and of course Mass Effect and we have some questions here from our community that we would like to get to so uh, since we already talked about her why not let's just do Doc Brooks question first um, Brooke writes in and says do you ever use a character's voice in real life do people ever catch it for example <laughs> do you ever order a pizza accidentally as Commander Shepard <laughs> no I am not a person who runs around doing funny voices I mean they come out of me sometimes I will that's actually not true. I have to say, it hit me the other day how grateful I am for masks right now because I'll walk around in the store talking to myself and it's, <laughs> and it's weird voices. It's a lot of foreigners come out of my mouth. I'm like, oh, that's lovely. No, I have some of those. <laughs> well, my name is Anigo Montoya. You know, like, I just I sort of muttered to myself and it, it, you know, the voices in my head, all, a lot of them have different um, accents and things. And yeah. They're coming to take me away now. <laughs> yeah, but no, not a, not deliberately. I don't do it deliberately. I'm pretty shy that way, actually. I was really, really shy as a kid. I had like like one friend and I hung out with my dog and I read books. I was, I was uber nerd. And um, I remember once they were talking about careers in middle school and they were talking about, um, somebody was trying to talk about advertising and they were talking about commercials that you remember and things that stick in your head and they brought up this one commercial with this dude who make grew coffee beans and and the guy was like does anybody remember what he said does anybody remember what he said and I was like I know I know I know and I never spoke up and it was like this dead silence and I finally went East Mountain Grown <laughs> and the whole class had busted out and I was like ah, I want to die now <laughs> No, 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 no. And it was then you knew you wanted to be a voice actress. I, I'm, I'm in this room by myself and no one's here and I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I love it. The art of play is something that I find really fun about the creative fields. And we've had the pleasure of talking to several voice actors on the show before. And I think what's really fascinating about the process for, for voice acting is that it feels like you have – you know, a little bit more flexibility in terms of what you do with your voice, but you actually are much more confined because you really don't have the opportunity to improv very often, which I think is a misconception that people have about voice acting. Do you find that you feel liberated by that constraint because it gives you a very like, you know, specific window with which you can play in? Or do you sometimes kind of rebel against that and want more flexibility? I think both happen. You know, there are some of us voice actors who are improv geniuses and being around them, like you can say no improv. Yeah, good luck. It's coming out and it's going to be amazing and it's awesome. Um, I, I I find it comforting. I find knowing where my boundaries are really comforting. And because uh, then, you know, it's expected, you know, you know, the mark you have to hit, you know, what's going to be true and right for the project. Mm hmm. That's a, that's a fair point. I guess I just imagine sessions in the booth where you're just like trying all these like crazy voices. It depends. That's the initial, like when we show up and you get hired for something and, or if you've got incidentals, like you come in and you got, they need you to do three or four characters. I'll, you kind of go through the inventory and go, all right, this one's here. I like to line them up in the beginning at first so that I can get clear on my separation. Like, is it, I want this one to sound different. You know, they've all got to sound individual, right? So if I get them lined up and I get them all placed, then I can relax for the session because I know where each one's going to go when the time comes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, our next question is from Sindel. And Sindel writes, hi, all. My question for Jennifer is, what is she doing to keep herself sane during these crazy times? Love you guys and love Jennifer's work. 
<laughs> I have removed all expectations of high function. Yeah, that has been the one thing I've done. I mean, cause like, well, I'm a mom, I'm a single mom. And, um, and I've ended up in a house that I had to build a studio and now I'm demoing the rest of the house. I'm, I'm like following that on my Instagram. Um, like I'm doing little videos about my demo and stuff of my house, but I don't know, just slow down, slow down, expect less, appreciate more, you know, just to seriously appreciate the little things. If you've got indoor plumbing, you're in the top like 5% of the world. If you've got a community around you, even virtually, that's a really great thing. I find things that I can appreciate like genuinely. And I just hang there. It's where you put your attention, right? I put my attention on what's working Mm -hmm. and on the things that aren't, I put my attention on what I can do about it. And I just don't bother with the rest. That is like fantastic life advice. I, know, I need to be taking notes, man. I know I'm supposed to be co-hosting this thing, but I'm like, where's my note? I think they're recording this show. I don't know. But I- <laughs> you know, she's, she's right about that. Um, I, I'm glad that we talked though a little bit about quarantine and, you know, slowing down because I think it's been really fascinating seeing how actors are pivoting to try to keep working during this time to kind of keep the production moving forward. I had the opportunity recently to watch a video with Amanda Wyatt, a voice director I know you've worked with several times, and on the work that she did with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and how they worked with voice actors from home so much so that they even put like the mocap dots on their face over Zoom and, you know, having them do recordings with directors over, over like Skype essentially. And I was like, that's crazy that they're still making it work. Are you finding that it's been challenging or has it really allowed you to kind of look at your work in a different way? It's the beginning was challenging just to get all this tech stuff nailed down and to figure out like just to how to, interface with the engineers in a way that works and because I, I find FaceTime is really valuable because <laughs> when anything goes down I like 911 and a couple of engineer friends and go what what <laughs> my my twin because I'm a temporary rig here I have my little compressor for my mic down near where I keep putting my feet so I keep hitting the wrong buttons with my feet and I'm like what did I do I broke it I don't know and he's like push the button I'm like oh thank you um and so I, you know, that piece, like people, I got um, working on a project that I can't talk about, but it's so good. And the microphone we recorded on my beautiful microphone that I love, I have my Bronner Phantom, um, but it wasn't the same mic we've been using for a year and a half on this project. So they actually ended up shipping me an identical mic to the one that I used. And it's a mic that you wear on your head, like right here. Huh. So I have a, a baseball cap. In so the like booth. a stage microphone that it, like musical theater it, people yeah, wear, it's right? Lo- like a love in a way yeah love mic so yeah like, like managing all the technical stuff was like whoo it's a high hill you know and I initially I was like oh good and I was like no 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 that is not going to serve you change your change the way you're looking at it and I was like okay let's do it <laughs> I just had to shift how I was looking at it because at first I was like eh. I'm like nope you got to move that or it's not going to work mm-hmm. that's a good point as well yeah. Yeah, um well- and you have to be flexible, right? Because you'll be getting gearing up to do something and Source Connect gets mad at the backup files that you're running and everybody, and it just quits. And you're like, okay. Oh, you know, you're preaching to the choir here. I think yeah. Wesker Games has experienced every potential technical difficulty that is possible to experience. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I learned this cool detail. Um, Mark De La Fuente, an engineer friend of mine, he said, if, you're, if your Source Connect sample rate is different than your, if you're running like Twisted Wave as a backup, um, if that's different, Source Connect will just quit. So make sure they're both at, you know, 4824 or 4416. Like, make sure they're the same. And then they shouldn't get in fights with each other. <laughs> that's such a good way of putting it. Because the so much of the technology that we use definitely feels like it's getting in a fight with itself or with other programs and you have to launch them in a very specific order and have all the settings just right. Honestly, the fact that people can do this kind of video production is a miracle in and of itself. It's amazing. <laughs> it's we're, we're, I mean, look around, look at how adaptable humans are. We got this. Yeah. I'm glad that you have been such a beacon of inspiration for so many people. I was telling Brittany about some of the other things that I heard you speak about um, over the last couple of years of this 
many, many hundreds of interviews that you do all the time for your work. I think it's really fascinating how you really make a point to have a point of view on your social media accounts. I was mentioning that I follow you on Twitter at tweets. If people are interested, please go follow Jennifer. She's uh, lovely online. Um, do you find that you censor yourself at all? Or are you in the camp of like, I get to say what I want because this is how I feel? Because I know that's a conflict for some artists. No, I mean, my my priority is don't stink up the space. You know, like I learned a long time ago that I don't know how to put it, but the vibe that you operate, if you will, the vibe you run at has an effect on the world. So I, I listen, I've had my moments and I've been like, bah, 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 you know, and that, that doesn't help. It doesn't help. Like what's going to raise the level? What's going to move us forward? And I try to stay focused on that. And the things that move us forward are constructive action. Are you registered to vote? Do you have a plan to vote? Have you reached out to three or maybe even five friends and gone, hey, do you have a plan? Let me help you out with your plan. Like those are little tiny constructive things we can do to take it back from the current oligarchical takeover we're all under. Um, but um, it, it is nice to have a platform to share information that I think is relevant. And the cool thing is if people don't like it, they don't have to follow me. <laughs> you know? I, my Insta is a little lighter, although not always. I'm, I'm J Hale Graham on Instagram and it's a little lighter, but it's still like, I'm, I'm, I have an opportunity to help to, I mean, make a difference is a bit self-important, but to share anything that might be useful to open up a line of questioning, to support people. You know, the things that I find helpful are kindness, you know, start with yourself. Because if you're mean to yourself, it's hard to keep up consistent goodwill toward anyone. Um, you know, and just do your best. Yeah, it, I don't know, it's nice. It's, it's nice to have a platform to communicate, but I can't just spew about everything and I censor myself a decent amount. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest places I censor myself is, is really I just pause I try to pause and not emotion tweet. Um, I'm getting better about that lately. But when somebody comes at me with, say, an opposite political perspective, or I, I hate politics, I prefer government, I wish we had some. Um, and that was existing for decades before the current situation, my feeling about that. Um, but if somebody comes at me with a different perspective on guns or on this or on that, and they're vitriolic and icky and personally attacking, I try to back up and remind myself of what we have in common. Like we both have someone we love. We both have someone we care about. We both have, we both, maybe we both like ice cream, you know, let's just start there. Cause what I want to change is not the content of what they're saying, but the energy around it. And it'll start with me. It'll just hold a different space. And I've had a couple of those where the, the interaction started like, and it ended like, oh, okay. Yeah, we're different, but we can be cool, you know? And every now and then I'll see on my timeline, these not more regularly now, people just going at each other based on something I said. And every now and then I'll jump in and I'll go, not on my timeline. You don't get to be crappy to each other on my timeline. You can disagree, but this is not okay. Yeah. You should narrate a self-help book written by you. <laughs> Thank you. For Jennifer's <laughs> next project is her own audiobook. <laughs> I've been thinking about doing it. There's a class that I teach. I haven't, I'm, I'm going to be launching it. I don't know when over the next few months. It's called The Head Game because a lot of creatives get out there and they, they do all these incredible trainings. I know in the voiceover world, there's incredible people teaching um, beautiful skills, but I teach about how to get your head game together so you can actually show up and bring yourself forth when you get in that room and bring out all those incredible skills that you worked so hard to acquire. Like that's what I teach. Um, and I'll, I'll be launching that coming up, but, um, <laughs> as soon as I, I've got other stuff to launch first, I've got other special <laughs> announcements coming on. So yeah. Oh, yeah speaking of which you said you had an announcement that you were ready to make this I morning. <laughs> <laughs> she takes a drink. Let me do a little, I know I suck down water like it's going out of style. Let me do a little backstory. So when I was recording To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, I finally got my courage up and I started singing in clubs when I was 15 and like writing songs here and there when I was like 12. And uh, then I stopped doing it for a long time because I, you know, random judgment voice decided not good enough, you know, mm -hmm. 
and do something that makes money and is practical. So this year, part of the you know blessings of COVID, I um, I finally just decided back in July to release a song that I had written and recorded. And with the help of Michelle Bobak, who's amazing, she's um, Deus Ex and other stuff, Elias Defexis's um, wife. And she uh, was super helpful in that process. And I recorded a song called Never. And I released it July 10th. The uh, link is on my bio on Instagram and on uh, Twitter, I believe. And it was while we were recording to sleep in the sea of stars and Christopher Paolini heard it and he really liked it. And he asked if I would uh, come up with a song for this one little segment of the book where Akira, the lead character just sings a little song. And I was like, yeah, I'll give that a go. And I've, but I've never written for someone else. So I reached out to a writing partner of mine who does that all the time, Todd Herfindahl. And I was like, Todd, can we do this? He's like, yeah. So um, he created this amazing frame and we collaborated and came up with yes we got the song done that Christopher asked for and then this other song just birthed itself out of the whole to sleep in a sea of stars vibe and I'm in love with it it's a beautiful song so sometime in the next couple weeks we are going to do a virtual release party for the song a virtual song release party watch my twitter watch my instagram I will be posting when we are having that release party and I'm so excited it's an oh. incredible song i wish i could play it for you right now but i'm holding it i'm holding it for the release it. congratulations so thank you oh, i'm happy thank for you. you sometimes it's... you know we got to beat the shit out of that annoying voice in our head who tells us we're not good enough or we can't do it and you just got to do it yeah just don't engage i'm having so much fun now it's like the, the gates are open now forget it I'm, I'm doing this and this song i think people are gonna if you like game music if you like that cool sci-fi vibe like it's like the book you're just it's oh my god i'm so excited about it <laughs> yay yeah. we'll have to keep tuned to your twitter account then yeah yeah i'll def I'll, I'll tag you guys when i announce yeah oh yeah. please do i i have been listening to you your first single never which you mentioned and i dropped it in the chat for people as well and wow. i love the kind of like old school acoustic country vibe that it has it's like very mm -hmm. subdued and I was just like really, really digging it because I think when I listened to it for the first time, I had no idea what style of music to expect. But is there a particular genre of music that you feel yourself kind of drawn to? No, I like I like quiet stuff like never. Never was a song that birthed itself. I don't know who those people are. I don't know where they are. I can see where they are super clearly, but their their story needed to come out. And I was like, OK there's your story. And it came out of, I literally wrote that thing and all my guitars. Are, eh. I wrote that thing with two strings because I don't play guitar very well, but I love to write. And um, it's just two strings is how I wrote that thing. And so my preferred genre, I love, I love everything to listen to, like everything. Um, I end up in that quiet space. I love atmospheric stuff. I love like intense rock and, you know, like industrial rock kind of a thing like when I'm working on another song of mine and I keep telling the guys I'm like I want to hear like rusty nails in the back of this <laughs> I want that violin to be twisted till it sounds like it was like skeletons on on old wire like do it you know so we'll see I'm kind of still forming a lot of that but yeah I mean I, that acoustic thing is a really happy place for me too because I can sing super loud I don't know if you guys have ever seen the um the scooby-doo and the hex girls thing uh scooby-doo and the witch's ghost the hex girls mm -hmm. like um i was the lead singer for the band eco goths and it's loud and it's fun and you know i love that stuff too i love the whole gamut i think that that's excellent and i have like a bunch more questions in the tank here but Brittany, i want to give you the opportunity to to ask some questions as well because i don't want to co-op jennifer's time i know we only have a few minutes left <laughs> Uh, honestly, like, I'm going to be real. I, I'm just listening to Jennifer. And I'm just enjoying everything she's saying. So apologies that I have nothing in the tank at this moment. Thank I'm you. just like, keep take keep taking me to church, please. Like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know all this already, don't you? It's inside you, right? No, yeah, no, it, it all it all is really good. I think just to kind of piggyback off what you said, this time of COVID is kind of a time of re-self-discovery and kind of learning about how we operate as people. And I've done a lot of looking inside of myself too. And it is, it's just good to hear it come out of other people's mouths yep. because it's kind of reconfirming what you know and what you think you know. Yeah. And it's we need good each to other, hear. Right? 
We need each yeah. other to hold each other up in those moments because you're like, I think I knew this. I think I was I wrong because we've been indoctrinated to the opposite for so long. And what matters is us. What matters is our own soul. And we were sent here to express that. So let's make that the priority instead of the bottom line. Because mm -hmm. the bottom line belongs at the bottom. <laughs> That's why it's called the bottom. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, well, then I'm going to try to sneak in a couple of more quick questions from our community. Uh, Mike wrote in and says, what was your favorite line of dialogue and why was it I should go? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I should go. <laughs> it was that line that was such a crack up when we did um, Emmy one. It was like, Holy cow. It came up so many times. My biggest challenge was how do I do it? Just even slightly different this time, <laughs> slightly different this time. It is like the line that never goes away. Yeah. Mark, when he autographs Mark Muir, cause a lot of times I'll get a shepherd thing with both, you know, they want um, both Mark and I to sign it and, um, and he'll write, I should go. And then sometimes I'll tease and I'll go, yes, he should. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mark. He is so talented and such a delightful human being. He's just a lovely human. Yeah, he's awesome. I know that lots of people in our community want us to try to get you to spill the beans on the Mass Effect remaster, but I feel like that would be unfair to you. <laughs> I have no beans. That's not my department. You're like, I don't know what's <laughs> happening with that. So I Tell guess that well, we we're show up and when to talk. <laughs> You're like, I know, I know when I can talk and when I can. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to ask about N7 Day and the Mass Effect community. Obviously, it's a big thing that we talk here at What's Good Games a lot. And it's a very iconic character of the really dozens of iconic characters you've played over the course of your career. I mean, do you ever get involved with the community in an ongoing way still with Mass Effect? Do you have to prioritize some of your other franchises that you're involved with as well, since you have so many fandoms that you're you know in the thick of i just i prioritize the people and the interaction with the people i will say i've been thinking about n7 day especially right now since we're all on lockdown like i think it would be such a cool chance to get the whole cast together and do some crazy zoom like just coffee talk you know with everybody and uh, maybe like hook up a signing after for people because people always ask about that and i'm like i don't have the system together to sign stuff for you guys um but um yeah, I keep thinking about that. I think that would be super fun. What do you guys think? I mean, I'll, volu oh, I'll volunteer yeah. to host that thing right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> who, who do I need to email at Bioware and EA to make this happen? <laughs> yeah, actually, we could do it. Just we actors could just do it if we can clear our calendars and just make it happen. Oh, that would be so cool. That would yeah. be phenomenal. Yeah, I'd love to have like Patrick and Karen Weeks in there and Yes. And Drew, like I'd love to, and and Mac Walters and Caroline, like I'd love to have everybody in there. That would be Casey if he'll talk, but Casey's so shy. When they, when they released <laughs> um, Casey Hudson, when they released Mass Effect Three, we did a um, midnight signing at uh, GameStop in LA, and midnight's not my time. Like you know, six a.m.'s my time, <laughs> but I, we did it. And I remember I was a little like, okay, it's midnight. Whew, we're gonna do this. And people came in and that was energizing. And I was at a table right here and Casey Hudson and uh, Caroline were at uh, Livingstone were at a table over here and somebody dropped the box with FemShep on the back in front of me. And, and they, only they dropped it like it was the proper front and it was the metal one. And I just was like, oh, like, like, it like fireworks in my heart going off. And I went, <gasps> And I stood up on the table and held it over my head. And I said, Casey Hudson, thank you. And he was like, oh, my God. <laughs> that That's amazing. Moment. She's, of course, talking about this. This. Art. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry you guys are getting the reflection from my camera, but this is this is the art. Oh. It was such a pivotal moment in AAA marketing to finally oh. have a female on the box of a big game. And I know we've come so far since then, but I mean, like such an amazing moment for, I think gamers who identify as femme or gamers who identify yep. as women, like all over the globe, be like, yes, finally, we have a powerful kick-ass, you know, lady on the cover. And, you know, she's just as good as, you know, the male version of Shepard, right? Yep. It's amazing. It's amazing. And that was from the fans. 
The fans demanded it. Like you guys out there, you have power. You have power. It's like, I always think of it as like piranhas. Like piranhas, one piranha is not going to take down a large animal by itself. I mean, I love large animals. Nothing should happen to them. But just as a, as a metaphor is this. Um, but a school of them, it's over in a few minutes. Like we are that school of fish. When we join together, we are that school of fish. We will get it done. Amen to that. Well, we are rapidly running out of time, but Jennifer, I want to say thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We would oh. love for you to let people know where they can follow you and you know where they can find your upcoming projects and anything else that you would like to promote. Thank you so much. Well, you can find me. I am on Twitter at jhaletweets. I am on Instagram at jhalegram, G-R-A-M, like Instagram. And uh, upcoming projects, the song Sleep in a Sea of Stars is like in the middle of my heart right now. Watch for that announcement. We'll be doing a virtual release party. There will be a giveaway in that release party from me. And uh, Christopher Paolini, I believe, will be joining us as well for that. And um, just I want to say a big fat thank you to you all. And listen, be good to yourselves. Be patient with yourself and everybody else. It's all going to be fine. We got this. And thank you so much for being there. No, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to do it for our episode of What's Good Games Live. We will, of course, put all of those links that Jennifer mentioned in the show notes down below. So if you guys are in your car or working out, or walking to your dog, whatever you're doing, you can go back and check those links later. And don't forget to sleep in a sea of stars is out Tuesday, September yes. 15th. Tomorrow, yes. the audio book. You should guys go check it out. I'm definitely going to read it. Oh, now. my God. It's amazing. It's I'm ready. I mean the book is incredible. I hope you like the audiobook. I'm so excited about it. To sleep in a sea of stars, that whole universe. Ah, amazing. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for us. We'll see you later. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.